glory father god we just thank you right now we worship you in spirit and in truth lord god we thank you for this environment that you've created for us to worship you in we thank you for everything you've done seen and unseen and father god i declare right now that we position ourselves not only to worship you but to receive from you I pray that every person in this sanctuary and every person that will be exposed to this teaching online receives at least one revelatory word from you that can alter their lives positively. Lord, we're not just here for religious reasons. We are here because we love you. And we showed up expecting to receive something from you today, Lord God. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask you to just move in this house and to move upon our hearts. Let your word go forth with accuracy and simplicity. I pray that as the atmosphere for faith is created, that we'll receive what we need from you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for fostering an atmosphere for the miraculous. And we know that you can move wherever we are in church, at home, in the car, in the store, wherever we are, Lord God, we believe that you can move in that environment. And so we thank you for moving even now. Thank you, Father God, for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for strength. Thank you for favor. Thank you for everything that you supply for us that we've overlooked. Help us to see your provision and be grateful and be thankful for it. Lord, as we prepare to move into the next phase of worship, Lord, I just submit myself to you to be used for your glory. I give you my mind. I give you my mouth. I give you my heart. Use me as a vessel to convey your truth and your heart to your people. I bind up distractions. I bind up anything that the enemy would try to do to keep revelation from flowing. And I thank you that we'll all walk away with something that we can apply to our lives. Practical steps, biblical steps, divine steps that we can apply to our lives and live like you desire for us to live. We believe it and we receive it and we thank you for it now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you can take your seats. Good morning to you all. I speak blessings on you in Jesus name. You know, I say it all the time. But this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad. And, you know, I tell myself that often when I don't feel like rejoicing and when I'm not too glad about it. You know, there are times when you have to talk yourself into God's truth. Man, that's good. You got to talk yourself into God's truth because we're not always excited. We're not always happy. Everything's not always positive from our perspective. But if we say what God said consistently and continually, we'll experience the truth of what he said. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, I just want us to be grateful for every day we get. So I'm going to go into it because I got <laughs> it was funny when God gave it to me. You know, I was talking to y'all last week and I said probably this week we will begin talking about faith. And uh, that will probably be pushed off one more week. The spirit of God gave me something he or he dealt with me in a way he typically doesn't deal with me on. So today I'm going to share the kingdom nugget with you because he gave me some particular uh, information I got to share with you. But uh, what God did or however what God did is a little strange. I'm going to give you a two for one today as far as the message is concerned. I don't know. Have you all seen these stores to where now they all have Dollar Tree and Family Dollar combined? I just saw that a couple of weeks ago and I was like, when did that start happening? I, I don't remember two stores being one, but we are in an environment now where they will combine two stores. So you might have to go to the Dollar Tree or you might have to go to Family Dollar. Well, if you go to the right place, you get both of them at the same time. And so what God is doing is giving us a two for one today. So I'm going to give you two messages in one today. And I believe I'm going to be able to do it in my allotted amount of time. So I want y'all to release your faith. Say, Pastor J, don't be lengthy. Pastor J, keep it short and keep it sweet and keep it spiritual. 
<laughs> Amen. If you want it, you got to say it. Amen. So I believe I'll be able to do it in the time frame that I need to do it in. What I want to do before we get into today's lesson, lesson those I want to share the kingdom nugget with you. And I really want you to lock in on what I got to share with you, because this is something that the spirit of God gave me. I, I let y'all in on how I, how I move. Oftentimes, the spirit of God deals with me directly or he'll deal with me about something going on and then he'll release me to share it with you. And so as I release to you what he shared with me, uh, for me, it was corrective. And I, and I think you'll understand as I go forward. For me, it was corrective. And I know he shared or he allowed me to share with you a while back. So I'm going to reshare. This is not something that you haven't heard, but I am going to share something he spoke to me this morning that he shared with me this morning. So I want to do that, too. So listen to this. If you need a tithe offering envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will get one to you. If you're watching this online, you can click on the link in the description below. It'll show you all the ways you can give. And we appreciate your giving in advance. The first thing I want to share is what God spoke to me, uh, shared to me uh, in November of 2019. And so I want to reiterate what he shared with me then, because it really what he spoke to me today took me back to what he said in 2019. So in November, November 13th, 2019 at 16 a.m. How do I know that? Because I journal everything God tells me, whatever God shares with me, whatever he lays on my heart. I write it down. I keep it in the journal so I can go back to it when I need to. So this is what he said. This is three years ago, almost three years ago. He said, trust and utilize my divine system of sowing and reaping your giving sets the tone for your living now what did I say God gives it to me and then he releases me to share it with you so when I got this three years ago he was talking to who me because a lot of the things the spirit of God gives me he doesn't give me the permission to share it in the, in the corporate setting but he did a lot and I didn't share it in 2019 I think I shared this with you guys maybe a year ago but he was letting me know that I can't be moved by what I see or what I feel. I have to be moved based on how the kingdom functions. So I'll say it again. He said, trust and utilize my divine system of sowing and reaping. So we know that God has a system because he said it's his divine system of what? Sowing and reaping. reaping. Then he said, your giving, not anybody else's, your giving sets the tone for your living. Now, this is what he spoke to my heart this morning, 631 a.m. And this is why I say it was corrective. But when I share it with you, I think you'll appreciate the corrective nature of it. He says that I get nervous when God talks to me like this. He started out by saying, you have not been. When I hear him say that, I'd be like, OK, because we love to get the blessings from God and we love to get the praise from God. But how many of you know God is also corrective? God will also correct you or he will also show you things that he told you to do that maybe you didn't do or he'll show you things that you're doing that he never authorized you to do. So this is what he said. You have not been utilizing my system of sowing and reaping and that's causing you or allowing you to suffer needlessly. Now, I say that again, because in 2019, he established that his system of sowing and reaping is how we set the tone for our living. Amen. Now, this is what he said, and this is going to bless you because it's not as harsh as what you might think it is. I'm going to show you what he meant in a moment. He said, you have not been utilizing my system of sowing and reaping, and that's causing slash allowing you to suffer needlessly. So what he's saying is that there are some things, wow, that we're experiencing. There are some things that we're going through, and based on what God is saying, it's our fault. Oh, we don't want to. No, pa no, Pastor Jay, it ain't our fault. We got to blame somebody else. It's, it's God punishing us or is the devil testing us. It can't be us, Pastor Jay. I can't have any responsibility in this. No, this is what he said. He said, you have not been. And because you have not been, that's causing or allowing you to what? Suffer needlessly. So, you know, when God starts talking to me like that, I need some clarity because I don't just say, well, praise the Lord. God, thanks for sharing. No. What do you what do you mean by that? So listen to what he's saying. What, listen to what he's sharing with us. We have to be just as intentional about reaping as we are sowing. See, we love to sow. I believe we're a great giving church and we love to sow. 
But we have to be just as intentional about reaping as we are sowing. Do you know how irresponsible it would be for a farmer to cultivate the ground, plant his seed, and this huge harvest of whatever he planted rises up and he says, well, I'm not going to go reap that. I don't earn it. I, I don't deserve it. I'm not going to do that. There's other people that have other things that need to be done. I'm not going to take the time necessary to reap. You would think that that farmer was being negligent. At the very least, irresponsible because you got a, a field full of harvest, but you're saying, I'm not going to reap it. Well, what God was showing me, okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, you have to be just as intentional about your reaping as your sowing. And it's, remember, it's, a, it's sowing and reaping. It's a tag team. They work together. It's not sow or reap. It's sowing and reaping. And he's saying, because we're not utilizing that system, we are suffering needlessly, and which implies that we're going through some. Wow. Thank you, Lord. We are going through some things that God doesn't want us to go through simply because we're not taking advantage of his system. Or at the very least, not working it properly. So check out what he said, because I'm going to let us all off the hook, because he's not he, he wasn't talking about you got some some unconfessed sin in your life. He wasn't talking about you're doing this and you're doing that. I'm going to show you what he was talking about. Ooh, turn. I didn't give it to your AV ministry. So I give you time to turn to Hebrews chapter three. I'm going to look at Hebrews three. I'm going to look at Hebrews four and I'm going to look at Hebrews 10. So AV ministry, it'll be King James Version as well. You can turn to Hebrews and this is really going to bless you. I'll show you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll show you where we have been dropping the ball in our reaping. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Hebrews chapter three. You can start at verse one when you get it. A.V. Hebrews chapter three. I'm in the King James Version today. Oh, man, this is good. Thank you, Lord, for showing us. So I, I think we need to really see this. Y'all ready? It says, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now, when you read in the King James Version of the Bible, profession is synonymous with confession. So profession and confession are the same thing. They're, they're Greek words that just mean acknowledgement. You have to acknowledge something that has been said or declared over you. So we can read it this way. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. So if he's the apostle and high priest over our confession, maybe we need to be saying something. Oh, Lord. look at Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews four, 14, because anytime I, anytime I see God being repetitive in the scripture, I know it's something he really wants us to pay attention to. Hebrews chapter four, verse 14 says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our what? Profession or confession, which means we're supposed to be saying something and we're supposed to be saying something continually because we got Jesus watching over what we say, because we know in the Old Testament, it says that he watches over the word to what? perform it. He hastens the word. He brings the word to pass. So now we see over in the New Testament that Jesus right now sit, sitting at the right hand of the father is in heaven, sitting right next to God, waiting for us to give him something to perform. And if we aren't consistent with our confession, we're not utilizing his system of sowing and reaping. Because we hear sowing and reaping and we immediately go to money. But you are also supposed to sow your words of faith so you can reap the harvest of your expectation. See, it ain't just, well, I'm going to put some money in the bucket and hope God moves. You better put some faith in your heart and speak out what God has said and then reap a harvest of what he promised. Through, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Through these exceeding great and precious promises, we escape the corruption in the world through lust. You know why we can't get away from some stuff? Because we ain't saying nothing. We got to latch on to a promise and thank you, Jesus, and give God something to work with. 
Give God something to watch over. Give our apostle and high priest of our confession something to perform. What are we saying? He was correcting me and now I'm sharing it with you. And even now he's giving light to it. He said, yeah, you're sowing because I immediately went to finance. I'm saying, Lord, I am sowing. I got a whole sowing envelope where I look for opportunity. I walk around looking for opportunities to be a blessing. So how am I not utilizing your system? And he was letting me know because you're not saying enough to reap enough. Woo! See, it's one thing to go through the, the first part, but I got to follow up with the B side. I have to consistently speak what I'm believing God to do. And that is in any area. If, if it's a mental area, I got to speak what God has declared, not what I'm feeling. If it's a physical area, I got to speak what God has declared, not what I'm going through. If it's financial, I got to speak what God said, not what I see. If it's spiritual, I got to speak what God said, not how I feel about myself. If I sow God's word into my heart enough and speak God, look, that's how you got saved. The Bible says, for with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. So if you want to be delivered, salvation is just deliverance. So if you want to be delivered from something you're going through that you know is not God's will for your life, you got to believe it in your heart and then you got to consistently confess it with your what? That's why the enemy is, is after your mind, because if he can get your mind, he can control your mouth. That's why you, a lot of the things you identify with yourself, it's not you. It's the enemy throwing things at your mind, trying to get you to say something in alignment with his agenda. Because Satan knows I can't make you do anything. But if I can get your mouth, you'll do the work for me. He said, yeah, y'all are sowing things, but you aren't reaping anything with your words. And remember, he was talking to me first because there's some things I'm believing for. There's some things I'm standing for. And he was letting me know, yeah, you might be saying some things, but it's not enough. You know, if you got if you got a 10 acre lot, you're going to struggle with just a push lawnmower cutting that thing. You got a 10 acre lot, that little push lawnmower that you got to empty the bag every third strike. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to struggle. So what he was saying is, oh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all bear with me because I'm getting he hitting me as I'm sharing it with you. He said, what you're doing isn't wrong. The level you're doing it on isn't sufficient for what you're expecting. Woo! See, it's not that what you're doing is wrong. It's just that what you're expecting God to do for you, the level that you're doing it on doesn't match. You, you can't get it. It's not going to come through because oh, Jesus is sowing and reaping and you're not reaping on the level that you're expecting to receive. And when I say you, we all I think y'all know by now we're all included in that. Amen. One more verse from Hebrews chapter 10. Look at this. I want to drive this point home. So if you don't learn nothing else from this nugget today, you got to know this. You better put your mouth to work. You better put your mouth to work. Whatever it is you are believing in your heart, you better start saying it about yourself. You better start saying it about your situation. You better start saying it about your friends. You better start saying it about your family. Well, Pastor Jay, I don't have no control over my family, but you do have control over your environment. I don't know what you do out there, but when you come in this house, you are this, you are that, this is happening, that is happening. And if you keep speaking it and they come to your house and they receive peace and they receive solace before long, they start saying it about themselves. <laughs> Jesus, Hebrews chapter 10. Calm down, Pastor Jay. Whew. Verse 23, Hebrews 10, 23. Let's look at this because this, oh, Jesus, I love it. Verse 23 says, let us hold fast the profession, profession also means what? Confession. confession. It's the profession, confession, or acknowledgement. So when it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. So why can I keep saying what God told me to say? Not because I'm faithful. Who's faithful that promised? He's faithful that promised. Who is he a reference to? Who made the promises? 
God. Just like Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised he could perform. Get your focus off of you. That's why we aren't saying the proper things because we're looking at us too much. Let us hold fast the profession, the confession, the acknowledgement of our faith without wavering, without staggering, without changing our minds. For he is faithful that promised. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. And I must speak it. Jesus. So, yeah, he's saying you're suffering needlessly because you aren't working my system of sowing and reaping. Yeah, you're sowing some words, but you're not saying what you need to see. So if you want to receive from God on the level that you need to receive from God, if I want to receive from God on the level that I need to receive from God, then I have to be more diligent. Thank you, Lord. I have to be more diligent with my confession. There me, that means that there are some things I can no longer say. There are some things I must say more of. If it, let's, let's use health for an example, because the Lord has really been dealing with me about health the last two or three weeks. So I feel a, I feel a message coming on soon because he's really been dealing with me about health. And even part, my part one of today's lesson is going to touch on it a little bit. If, OK. <sighs> I'm trying not to make this a three part thing. I I won't go because if I go to it, it's going to make me it's going to make me turn into a sermon. If God says by the stripes of Jesus, we're healed. Do we believe God? So (laughs) this is set up, y'all. So if God said by his stripes, you were healed. First Peter 2, 24, it says were because it's pointing back to the cross when all of humanity was healed from all sin, sickness and disease. But you got to receive that by faith. Amen. If it says you were healed, if I'm experiencing any kind of symptom, any kind of issue in my body from God's perspective. Oh, wow. This is a setup. God. From God's perspective. Am I sick? What, what's the difference? Why am I not sick? Because of whose perspective? So if he's faithful, that promised it, Jesus, what I have to do is stop looking at my perspective and I got to look at God's perspective. And if I'm looking at God's perspective, I got to say what God is saying about me. So even though I might be in the hospital and even though I might be on an IV drip and even though I might be scheduled for surgery tomorrow, I say, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed. If I got to be healed through the assistance of the doctors, I'm healed. If I got to be healed miraculously, I'm healed. If I got to be healed by some kind of other ways or methods, Lord, it doesn't matter. I don't care about the method. I just know the maker of my healing. So I don't care about the method. I don't care if they went this way and they went. I don't care. By his stripes, from his perspective, from his point of view, I'm healed. And so I'm just foolish enough to agree with him. And that means that there's going to come a point. I'm about, I got to let this go. There's going to come a point to where my faith will be tested. And it's going to be tested by people that know my situation. And they might not even know that they're testing me because they'll come up and say, how you feeling? You all right? I heard about what you went through. I'm praying for you. That can't be easy. And and most of the time it's genuine. You have to be careful how you respond. Because, you know, we want to make people feel comfortable. And we tell, well, you know, I'm all right. I'm I'm getting better day by day. No, you ain't. You healed. Now, it's going to (laughs) confuse. Oh, man, I might have to throw this whole thing away. (laughs) Well, not throw it away, but push it off the next week. It's going to confuse. But not just some people, some less spiritual people that don't understand you can speak a spiritual truth. And from the outside, it looked like a flat out physical lie. Hey, (laughs) yeah, you can speak in faith and people can look at your situation. You lying wonder. How in the world are you talking about you healed and you right here and I see you with me? Because you're looking at the wrong perspective. You're lo- oh, glory. You're looking at what you can see. But I'm looking at now unto him that is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless. I'm trusting him to fix me. 
because he already did it through Jesus. So now I know he's watching over the word that I'm confessing to perform it in my life. So I have to say I'm healed because that's the only thing that God will co-sign. He's not going to co-sign my fear. He's not going to co-sign my worry. He's not going to co-sign my friend's concern about me. Now, let me give you some let me give you a little help here. I don't know how we got here from the nugget, but Jesus. It's OK. To. <laughs> wow. It's OK to outline the situation you're dealing with without co-signing it. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Let's say I'm in the let's say teaching purposes only. I'm in the hospital for high blood pressure. It's spiked and they can't get it down. And a friend is asking me, well, how are you doing? What? Well, I heard you got admitted to the hospital. Well, yeah, it, I am in the hospital. Why, why did they admit you to the hospital? Well, they said that my pressure had spiked and I, and I had high blood pressure. So I had to come to the hospital and they said this. And I'm listening to what they're saying. I understand that. But, you know, we used to sing a song. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. But that's what they said. I'm healed. So I'm letting them run the test. Glory to God. And I'm going to sit here. I'm going to listen to the doctor because he was trained for multiple years to look at all this instrumentation and to know what all this stuff means. I don't know what it means. But when I walk out the door with the report they gave me, I'm going to look at that report. But I'm also going to look at the report. And he said, by my stripes. I healed you. So the doctors are saying this. God has said that. Who will I align with? So they admitted me for high blood pressure, but I thank God that by his stripes I'm healed. See, it's okay to outline the condition without agreeing with it. Say, oh. <laughs> God, I, I mean, I was up to almost 12 o'clock going over this, and it don't even look like he's going to let me teach it. It's like, well, God, how can I deal with something you healed me from? Because he healed us from it on the cross. He healed you from it before you were even born to deal with it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He healed, uh, he healed us from whatever it is before we were even conceived to need healing. And so for me to, Jesus, for me to receive what God did on the cross through Jesus, I got to connect to that by what? Faith. faith. And sometimes faith, whoo, <laughs> sometimes faith takes a moment to manifest because it's the evidence of things we can't see. It's the substance of things we hope for. And it's the, it's the proof of what I can't see. So the reason I can say I'm healed is because my faith in my God is my proof. Now, if you want me to give you a document outlining that I can, because it's, uh, here you go, it's a faith fact right now. It's yet manifesting, but it's not any less real. And so what allowed, thank you, Jesus, what allows what God has promised to become my reality in my man. That's good. Lord, my manifested reality. My mouth. What am I saying during the interim? You know, I, I'm a Bible geek and I, I just love kind of like the gray areas of the Bible. Y'all remember where. Uh, Jesus and John the Baptist were both kind of born around the same time. If I remember, they were around six months apart. Um, <laughs> and I remember if I remember correctly, John's father was not allowed to speak until John was born. You know, why I believe God did that because he knew John's dad had a mouth problem. <laughs> and sometimes we have to be we have to mute ourselves. <laughs> and he wasn't released to speak until he agreed with what the name, what the name of the child should be. Because they were saying, we're going to name him this, we're going to name him that. And the dad was like, I, see, in my mind, 
I know it, it's not biblically accurate, but in my mind, he had like a legal pad. And they were like, oh, we about to name him John. He was like, oh! I, we, I forgot what name it was, but it wasn't John. Because nobody in the family would have named him John. And he wrote out, his name is John. And when he acted in obedience, his tongue was released. See, there was, ooh, there are sometimes we need to put our mouth on punishment. While God is working on our behalf. Sometimes we just need to go on a, on a, on a tongue fast. <laughs> you don't have nothing to say? You don't have no response? Give him crooked lip and everything. <laughs> like my wife, and we do that David that Sure, boring, boring, boring. I don't have, nope. <laughs> nope. Nothing to say. Because if I, ooh, wow. I might be able to give y'all part one. I can't give y'all part two today. Because if I put my mouth on it, I'm going to mess it up. Hmm. Until I know I'm at a place where I can speak in agreement with what God has already said, my best move now is to say nothing. It's either to say what God said or don't say anything. Those are my two options. Say what God has said or don't say anything. Because the reason that we're having issues in our reaping is because we haven't been utilizing our mouths enough or properly. So that's what God, I didn't think it was going to go this long. I really thought it was going to be a 10 minute thing and I would be able to release it. But now I see how important it is for us. We have to monitor our mouths if we want to reap what God has already declared belongs to us. Amen. How in the world we get there from the kingdom, to, from, from tithing, I don't know. But I see how necessary it was. Y'all agree with it? Oh, thank you. Lord. Say this for me. Lord God, Lord God help me. Help me. Work with you, Work with, you. With, my mouth. with my mouth. Only let, Only let me, say me say what you co sign. Co-sign. And, and when I need to be quiet, give me the grace, me the grace. to hush. <laughs> that's, that's it. Give me the grace to hush. Give me the grace. That's one. Oh, Jesus. That's one of our best tools, me and Mel at home. Oh, because we both strong willed individuals and we are both growing in the grace to hush. You know, you be. be I, I mean, you have to bite your lip. You be, and she might not say nothing or I might not say nothing. And we both know it's in our best interest as a collective family that we don't say nothing. Because we understand if I speak in the heat of the moment. Oh, oh, oh. If I speak in the heat of the moment. I'm going to destroy what's been built up before that. I could have been good to my wife for six days straight. And I can say one word on the seventh day that will just nullify all six days of building her. Up. So that's why sometimes, most of the time, oftentimes, we need to put a beat on it, pause, before we speak. Should I say that? Should I say that? I know I not do I want to say it because we know we want to say it. Should I say it? Is this what I want to see? Is this what I want to happen in my house? Is this what I want to happen in my family? Is this what I want to happen in my finances? And you have to be very careful about it because the enemy will place people strategically in your life to try to get you off your faith confession. And so you have to be on guard. <sighs> OK, I got to let this go. I got to let this go. Father God, thank you. <laughs> so unorthodox, Lord, but thank you for what you gave us today. So help us to be faithful stewards of the process and the system of sowing and reaping. Whatever it is that we found in your word that we're declaring by faith, help us to only say what's in agreement with what we're standing on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And for, yeah, thank you, Lord God. And Father God, we nullify it. You said because if we bind it on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. And if we loose it on earth, it'll be loosed in heaven. So we bind up every negative, unbelieving word that we've spoken that has nullified our harvest. And we loose your provision. And we loose the harvest over our lives in any and every area we've been standing for, Lord God. Hallelujah. And anything and anyone that the enemy has been using to pull us away from what you've promised 
Remove it, Lord God. So that what you have for us and what you want us to do and what you want us to become and how you want us to walk can manifest. We're ready, Lord God. And we receive your grace to do everything you want us to do in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, of course, if you're if you're in the house, we receive you can there'll be a given receptacle at the real the sanctuary because I'm kind of I'm, I'm spiritually high right now. So I got to get my bearings back. There's a given receptacle at the real the sanctuary. So as you walk out, you can drop your tithe and offerings in the given receptacle. I'm going to give you part one of what was going to be a part two series or uh, two sided series today. So I got about 15, 20 minutes to do that. And then I'm working on my timing. Can y'all tell that I'm working on my timing because I, I, I'm, it's my desire to be under an hour. But, you know, I don't want to quench the spirit. But I also realize that pastors say we don't want to quench the spirit just as an example to not be disciplined. Or as a re we say, I don't want to quench the spirit. Well, Pastor Spirit left 20 minutes ago. That was, that was a pastoral dissertation. The spirit left 20 minutes. You were just talking. So I want to make sure that when I'm talking and when I'm speaking, it's Holy Spirit. And, say, and when Holy Spirit say we're done, we what? Done. And Holy Spirit can speak in an hour. He can speak in three hours. He can speak however he needs. He can speak in 10 minutes. Really, he already spoke in the nugget. But I believe that there's something he gave me today that I need to share. And so I'm not going to get to both sides. I got a part one and a part two. I was going to share with you today. I'm only going to share part one with you. So y'all ready for this? We just going to kind of segue right into it. So I'm going to give you the title of the two parts, but I'm only going to give you part one today. This is what he gave me. God wants you well. That's part one. Part two, walk his way. First, God wants you well. Part two, walk his way, which implies that they are connected to each other. Y'all, can I tell them that, Lord? Y'all might not believe this. I, y'all should believe it because y'all know I don't lie to you. But I'm, there are weird ways that God gives me messages. And y'all want to know how I got this message? Well, he had already laid on my heart, God wants you well. I didn't know he was going to connect it to another Another message. So I I share with you. I really didn't believe it came to me like that either. But I share with you how it came to me on the walk his way portion. I was sitting down studying something else and I don't even listen to this type of music. But I heard this hitting my heart. Walk this way. Talk this way. (laughs) What? And then. Right behind it, I heard walk his way. Because oftentimes, and okay, I'll touch it. Because oftentimes we walk a way that we want to walk. And we get upset when we don't get the results that we thought we should have had, but we never had God's uh, approval on it anyway, because it's something we wanted to do. So to really be successful, we'll talk about this next week, we got to walk his way. So now every time you hear that on a commercial or whatever, when you hear that song, you're going to think about walking his way. You're going to think about Pastor Jay said, walk this way. And you're going to take out the T and just say his. Walk his way. That's going to be good. I pray that I can get to that next week. But let's talk about the first part. God wants you what? Now, where did that come from, Pastor Jay? Well, the reason it came to me. Is because God, sometimes God will talk to me for me. Sometimes he'll talk to me for you. He talked to me for you. And he did this September 30th at 7.08 a.m. So that was what, three days ago? He said, I want my people well. Now just see law. Just let that register for a moment. Because, you know, there, there are. There are people, uh, my father refers to them as non-believing believers, that don't believe that healing is part of our rights and benefits as children of God. They believe that that went out with the early church where God used that to kind of, you know, push his agenda in the early church and it kind of faded away like they believe the apostles faded out. I don't I don't agree with that. I don't believe that. I believe if God, if he did before, he'll do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. Bible says he never changes. So if he was healing back in B.C., he's healing right now in A.D. Amen. Amen. So when he said, I want my people well, that 
does two things for us that shows us God's heart. And it also shows us that he knows we're not all well. Isn't that amazing? For him to say, I want my people well, he does two things with that statement. He shows what his heart is toward us. And he also reveals that I realize everything's not good with y'all. And so might, maybe if you get it from my perspective, being God, maybe if you get it from my perspective, you'll realize that you don't have to settle for that condition you've decided to settle with. Ah, <sighs> OK, OK. Listen to this. You cannot become or remain because it's possible to be well, but not stay in that condition. So you cannot become or remain well. And y'all know I'm about to define well in a moment without being submissive and obedient to the will of God. Listen to this very carefully. The reason that we are not everything the Bible says about us because we're not submitted and obedient to everything God tells us to do. The promises of God are conditional, which means if you do this, you get this. It's not conditional based on whether he loves us or not. It's conditional whether we obey his instructions to walk in the fullness of what he already promised. So the reason that we're not all well and the reason that we all struggle in some area is because for some reason in some area and nobody is exempt from this. We are not totally submitted and obedient to his instruction. I always I believe this with all my heart. If the Bible says something and my life doesn't match it, it's a me problem. I take responsibility for myself. If the Bible says this and I look at my life and I don't see my life matching what the Bible said, I never question God. It's a me issue. Either it's something I don't know, it's something I haven't implemented or it's something I'm missing. And so I go straight to God, Lord, show me what I'm missing. Show me where I'm missing it. Show me what's out of order. Show me, show me where I took the wrong turn. Because I'm not questioning you. You said it in your word. That's as good as gold for me. So where is it that I got off course? Where is it that I'm missing it? What, ooh, what is it that I'm not resisting? Because Satan comes to what? Still? kill and what so if something is stolen from me wow if, if if something is destroyed or if something is killed or someone is killed did God do it we got quiet because we ain't sure because we hear a lot of religious stuff about what God took them oh Jesus I get on this God took them I heard one person say God took them because he knew I was too dependent on them I said to myself because I've learned not to correct people when they are convinced that what they're saying is true. Yeah. Now, he would have asked me or if she would have asked me, do you think God took him? I would have been like a thousand times. No. But they didn't ask me. And they didn't seem like they want a correction on the topic either. So I let that's maturity. That's growth for me. Ten years ago, I would have ate them up. But I let, I let it ride. Because I can't go to the people, <laughs> okay, I can't go to the person I think is punishing me to get help. Think about it. If I think God killed my loved one, how am I going to go to God for peace? How am I going to go to God for joy? How am I going to go to God for strength if I think he's the one that did it? I can't go to the one that I need help from because I feel like he's the one responsible for it. Do you see how subtly crafty the enemy is? Now, people pass for all kinds of reasons. I've had, I've had people pass that were in my high school class. I had people pass that worked with me. I had people pass that, that, I, that I fellowship with. Everybody has people to pass. I never, ever, 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 ever attribute untimely death to God. I never do it. It's a hard and fast rule. It's so, it's so unbiblical and inaccurate to say, well, they just got their angel wings. An angel for a child of God is a demotion. Angels and humans are two totally different beings. The angels ask God, who is man that you are mindful of him? Who is the son of man that you visit him? What's up with this human you then created and gave all this authority that you have ordained? Uh, angels are servants. And we're talking about people passing and getting their angel wings. Why would you go to heaven and get demoted? You ain't getting no wings. You ain't no chubby Cupid. 
I don't know what that's got to do with heaven. No, 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 a thousand times. No, God might not. Oh, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. I remember when you spoke this to me years ago. It almost brought me to tears. God didn't take them, but you better believe he received them. See, that, that gives me some peace when I'm wrestling with how I could, why I know what they were believing for. I know what they were standing for. Do you? And that midnight hour when that pain is just too much to bear, you've been fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting, and you get a little glimpse of what the other side looks like. He didn't take them. Whoo! But you better believe he received them. I remember my father, I didn't appreciate it when I was younger, and I've heard him tell this story many times, but when you live life a little longer, you get the, you start appreciating what your parents told you in the past. I remember when my father was telling me that uh, his mom was in the hospital. She had uh, been diagnosed with cancer and she had gone through treatment. And if I'm not mistaken, they, it was on the uptake, right? It was, she was beginning to mend or be a little better and she was in the hospital. <clears throat> and at the time it was just my father there. And I think it was two other guys from the church with him. And she told him, she called him Lynn. She said, Lynn, she said, I, if I'm not mistaken, she said, I'm ready to go home. She either said, I'm tired, or I'm ready to go home. And, and he told her, now this is, this is the pastor standing in front of his mother. And his mother saying, I'm tired, or I'm ready to go home. And, and he told her, he said, well, mama, if, you, if you're ready to go, then go ahead and go. Now, he knew what she was talking about. And this is the same man that's preaching divine healing. This is the same man that went out to the parking lot, laid his hands on the young boy, and the boy rose from the dead. We got his mama today around, still walking this planet to bear it out. So we're not saying that God couldn't do it, but God's not going to violate another person's desire. And she said, I'm, just, I'm ready to go. And he said, well, mama, if you're ready to go, go. And he said, not long after that, the machine's Flatline. And now we, you're standing here. I can only imagine what was going through his mind. You're standing here with your mother gone. And all these questions flood in. Did I do enough? Did I say enough? Should I have said that? Should I have done that? And then he said, the machines pop back on. And, she, he's, and he'll tell you every time he tells a story, there were no words spoken. But it said he looked over to or she looked over to him and she smiled. And in that smile, he said, this is what she said to him spiritually. It's not only as good as you said it was, it's better. And then the machines went boop, back blank. <sighs> See, when you get a taste of the other side, sometimes you're just ready to go. And for us to sit here and say, well, God took, no. Now I can't go to God for help. I can't go to God for strength because let's be honest, I'm a little mad that you took him. I know we don't like to talk about that kind of stuff, but how dare you take him? Everything they did for you. Everything they said about you, how dare you take him? But if I change my narrative, and I say, Lord, I thank you for receiving them. Thank you for receiving. I thank you that they had a place to go. Whoo! Whoo! Glory. And Lord, just help me help others get there. Jesus. How we got on that, I do not know. It's, it's weird. Some weird things happening today. Let me get back to this. I got less than 10 minutes. You cannot become a remain well without being submissive and obedient to the will of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter five. Did that bless anybody right now? Amen. Now, what I'm not telling you to do, because I mean, this topic is almost as divisive as politics. Because you, you, when you're telling people how to process grief and, and, and the loss of a loved one, if you're telling them that what they heard, OK, thank you, Lord. I said this years ago. He brought it back up. Because not only are you saying that what they're saying is unbiblical, really what you're saying is what your mama told you is wrong. 
What your grandmama told you is wrong. What your great grandmama told you is wrong. And so you got to understand that it's more than just the information you're introducing. A lot of times you're saying you can't trust the information that you got from somebody you loved. That's why I say it's very, it can be very divisive. People can be very uh, uh, protective over what they've been told by people they love, whether it's right or wrong. And so don't be so set in, I got to let them know the truth. Just share with them what you can share. And if they aren't receptive, that's OK, because guess what the Bible says? One man plants, another man waters. God gives the increase. Maybe it ain't time for you to reap the harvest of their decision right now. Maybe it's just time for you to water the soil. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter five. Look at verse 28. Oh, Jesus. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. When you spake unto me and the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Now look at verse 29. Oh, that they were such an heart in them or oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me. When God talks about fearing him, that doesn't mean shudder as in terror. That means to respect and reverence him. He says that they would fear me. And here we go. The reason we can listen to this, you cannot become a remain well without being submissive and obedient to the will of God. That they would fear me and keep all my commandments. How many times? Always. Always. Why? That it might be well with them. Oh, 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 pause. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me the choices that I make impact my babies? What I do or don't do impacts my children. That's what the scripture is saying. Oh, that they were such an oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me, respect me, reverence me and keep all my commandments always. Not just when they get in a tight situation that it might be well with them and with their children for a season. During tax season. Around Christmas time. Forever. So I can deduce <laughs> just from this scripture that God wants me well, how often? And for? And that never changes. So regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of how tight it looks, regardless of how depressed I am, regardless of how anxious I am, regardless of how fearful I am, God wants me well forever. And because I know that, I won't tolerate depression. I won't tolerate anxiety. I won't tolerate fear. Will I experience it? Yeah. But because I know God's point of view about me, I won't tolerate it. I'm not going to build a city around it. Glory to God. Because knowing the truth of God's word doesn't mean you won't have to fight to walk in the reality of it. It's called a faith fight. That's why the Bible says fight the good fight of what? Faith. Why is it a good fight? Because if you fight, you'll win. Amen. Anybody, I don't mind fighting if I know I'm going to win every time. The reason people are fearful of fighting is because one, they're afraid of being hurt and two, they're afraid of losing. But if I know every fight I go into, I'm going to Mayweather that thing. Let's fight. Because it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how skilled you are. It doesn't matter how accomplished you are. If I know I'm a win, I don't mind stepping in the ring. Yeah. God wants us well. What does well mean? Now, let me geek out real quick. When we look at words in the Bible, in the Old Testament is Hebrew. In the New Testament is Greek. When I read in Deuteronomy, and in a moment I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 7. And when I read in Deuteronomy, the word well, the Hebrew word that was used means this. So I'll read it again. He said, keep all my commandments always that it may be well with them. That word well means, hey, glory, to be happy, to be loved, to be favored. <laughs> Jesus. So God says, I want you. I don't care what nobody else told you. God says, because you know, if, you, if you're serving the Lord, you got to suffer for his name's sake. <laughs> if you're walking with the Lord, you got to go through the doldrums of despair. 
<laughs> no, that's wrong, preacher. Because <laughs> the because the Bible don't tell you if you heard the pastor say that and you go to the church and say that don't get up to say that's wrong, preacher. Don't do that. Respect the house and walk out. Listen. Well means to be happy, to be loved, to be Jesus, to be favored. So God wants me happy. God wants me loved. God wants me favored forever. Not when I do everything just right. Forever. Always. That's his will for my life. Look at Jeremiah chapter seven, because we're going to see the word well in this text also. But it's slightly different. Jesus Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. And I'm about I'm about to wrap it up. Say wrap it up, Pastor Jay. I'm about to. Jeremiah chapter seven. I want to read verse 23 to you. <laughs> verse 23 says, but this thing y'all ready? It says, but this thing commanded I them. And when he says them, this is God referring to his people. He says, commanded I them, saying, obey my voice. Remember, you cannot become or remain well without being submissive and obedient to the will of God. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice. Uh oh, and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways. Remember what I said? The second part was walk his way. Walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. Why? that it may be well unto you. Now, this word is a different Hebrew word, well. It's similar, but it has an extra word that really blessed me. Now, in Deuteronomy 5, well meant to be happy, to be loved, to be favored. Here in Jeremiah, well means to be good, to be happy, uh-oh, to be successful, and to prosper. So all this doctrine about, you know, the more you suffer, the greater God is glorified. Sorry, that's not accurate. That's not biblically accurate because the Bible says he wants me to be well. He wants me to be good. He wants me to be happy. He wants me to be successful and he wants me to prosper. You know, he wants you to be. That's what he told Joshua. He said, meditate in the word day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Everything that God promises us is conditional on our submission and obedience to what he said. So the reason we can trust God completely is because he loves us and he wants us to be well. You know, it's hard. You know, oh, OK. In a relationship. When you, you know, you're first dating and you're trying to figure out how much should I share? How much should I say? It's difficult to know how much you can divulge of yourself because you don't really know the person. You don't really know if you can trust them. You don't really know if you can trust them with that area of your heart. If I tell them this, will they make fun of me? If I tell them this, will they, will they spread it all over town? If I tell them this, how will they respond? Can they handle it? Can they handle me? What will, what will they do? But with God, there's nothing that we can't tell them that he will say, oh, that's too much. Uh uh-uh. uh, I know I said I want everybody well, but I ain't know you were doing all that. No, I changed my mind about you. <laughs> no, no, you can't be well. Everybody but you know. The reason we can trust God completely is because he loves us and he wants us to be well. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be loved. He wants us to be favored. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to prosper. Check it out. That's why this second part was so important, but I'll share it with you next week. But we got to do it his way. We can't choose to do it our way. I, I, okay. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say this. <sighs> Oftentimes, as, as believers, as, as children of God, yes, sir, as children of God, we, and I don't, I don't mean any harm by this, because I've fallen into this category myself. We try to pimp the system. It's like, okay, God, I need this from you. So I'm going to give you my biggest seed ever. And I'm coming to church all month. And I'm going to pray in the morning. And I'm going to pray before I go to bed. And I promise you, for the next three months, I won't drink anymore because I need you to move. (laughs) And I'm sure God be in heaven like, all right, yeah, Jesus, do it for him. Because he already know. We already know. We're three months over. Well, I thank you, Father, for delivering me. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
<laughs> See, I'm still calling on you. I'm still calling on you. But we revert back to old behavior when we experience deliverance. What I love about God is he's so gracious to where that doesn't even affect his goodness. You know, I'm, I consider myself to be a pretty good parent. I'm growing and I'm learning every day. Our children can do something that we don't approve of. And we will still feed them dinner. Yeah, <laughs> I had to process make sure I went lying to y'all. We will still feed them dinner. <laughs> y'all know I am about being truthful. We'll feed them dinner. When they wake up in the morning, they'll still have breakfast. They'll still have clothes to put on. We'll still take them where they need to go. Why? Because we love them more than we disapprove of what they did. So where do you think we got it from? So whatever we do or fail to do, it doesn't stop God's love for us. Now, if Pastor Jay, if God loved me so much, why I'm going through all these Hades, all this Hades? Well, that's because sin is so intrusive. See, what sin does is it get, God gave me an acronym for sin a while, but I never preached it because I didn't want it to be like a religious thing. But it showed me that sin was just letting Satan in. Yeah, it gives Satan an entry point. It doesn't stop God's love for us. What it does is it opens up. <laughs> it opens us up to things getting in that we don't want to experience. That that reminds me uh, years ago, we had we had been living where well, we're in the house now. But when we bought the house, the garage door, it was an old wooden door. And so when it closed, it was a little off. Center, So it was just a little sliver of light that would come through because it never sealed completely. The door was so old and it was just the wood was giving way. And we kept saying we need to replace the door. We need to replace the door. We need to replace the door. And so, you know, like most husbands, I was like, we'll get to it. I get to it. I get to it. I get to it. And then six months went by and a year went by. And two years went by. And then we had a third child. The door was still there. I was like, we probably need to replace the door. <laughs> even been in our 15 years, probably need to replace the door. But what really pushed me over the edge, I was out. I was either in the garage or wherever I was. I was in the garage area. And y'all know this feeling. I saw something shoot under that little, that little gap. I said, oh, no, no. Uh, no, mm -mm, babe, let's find somebody. We're going somewhere tomorrow. Because what it was, ooh, because I wasn't protecting entry points of my house, it let something get in we didn't want to be there. See, I knew it was, it was there when we moved into the house. I looked at it every day but it wasn't a big enough issue to make a move on. Now that's just one I saw. I don't know what other little critter could have been crawling up under there that I didn't see. And see, that's how Satan is. He looks for those little cracks. The, the, ooh, Sean, he looked for the stuff we tolerate. He looked for the stuff we revert to that don't seem to be hurting nobody. And those are the cracks that he scampers through. And then you look up and your shoes tore up and your coat all holy because <laughs> they didn't got into something and destroyed it. So God is still saying, I love you. Oh, so Pastor Jeff, he loved me so much. Why is all this stuff happening? Because you got some open gaps that need to be sealed. We got some open gaps that need to be what? Sealed. Ha, that's good, Lord. This is a good place to start right here. And guess what the first gap that needs to be sealed is? Mm. It's almost like the Holy Spirit knew we were going here. That's the first gap that needs to be sealed. What are we saying? <laughs> Side note, totally unrelated to what I'm preaching, but I thought it'd be a good humor moment for y'all. I was cracking on my son. They were going to school uh, Thursday. He got in the truck and he just lost one of his teeth. And so I said, I'll see you later, Snagosaurus. Do you know that dude looked me right in my face and said, I'll see you later, Gaposaurus. <laughs> I, I, I said, what? Good thing I'm securing it. I mean, I mean he said it. I can't say you talk about me, I'm talking about it. And he said it so smooth. 
I said, man, I would have lost all my teeth. I would have said something like that to my parents. And he, he had no fear. He was laughing. They pulled out of the driveway laugh. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he wasn't lying. I guess he said, if you can call me Snaggle, I can call you Gap. <laughs> and see, that, that's good. Let me, let me tie this back here to what I was saying. That's really indicative of the relationship God wants us to have with him. You ever had God laugh with you before? Yeah, I'm not going to say it happens all the time, but there are times where God and I just laugh together. Where he'll share something with me and I just laugh about it. And it blesses me because it ain't a religious experience I'm going through. It's actually a relationship. And so that's good, Lord. That, that explains why we're going through all this. And so the reason God is talking to us as, I, as I'm closing, the reason God is talking to us about what he's talking to us about, about God wants you well. And next week we'll talk about walk his way because that's going to lead us into the faith uh, series that I believe I'm heading into. Because he wants us to get past all this religious dogma that we've digested for years. That's gotten in the way of just knowing him. And I say this because I'm done. I'm done teaching the message. I'm just flowing from my heart right now. I say this and I don't have any particular person in mind. I don't have any particular group in mind. But some pastors are going to have to give account for the way they handle God's people over these last few years. Now, I'm talking about decades. Some pastors are going to have to give an account. If you are truly called to be a pastor, the way we've been taking advantage of God, and I ain't going to put myself in that, the way they've been taking advantage of God's people, they're going to have to give an account. Why? Because there are so many people that don't want to have nothing to do with God simply because of poor representation. Poor representation. And so what God is doing for us is he's showing us how to be like him. You don't need to be like me. You don't need to be like me. You don't need to be like no other pastor. You don't need to be like no other apostle. You don't need to be like no other prophet. You need to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like me. I want to be Jesus. I want to be as much like him as I can be in my own way. I don't want to lose the, uh, what do you call it when you're made a certain way? I don't want to lose the, huh? Somebody say it, say it again. Yeah. I don't want to lose my authenticity. But I want to merge, I want to fuse myself with Jesus and become a new creation, which we already are in him. I want that to come to the forefront. And that's what I want for us all. And so I'm seeing that more and more how God is dealing with us. He's dealing with us to get us out of religious exercise and to introduce us into relationship. Because I, I, I watch these messages when I'm done. And I ask myself, Lord, why did I say that? Why did you allow me to do that? I would not have done that. That wasn't in the script. I didn't want to say, why would you? Let? And he's showing me that I want people to see just how easy. That's good, Lord. That's a blessing thing. Just how easily entreated I am. <coughs> it's not difficult to get to God. It's not, it's not difficult to hear from God. We just got to expect it. Spend, spend the time with him. And when he starts, it, it might startle you just how quickly God starts talking to you. And I don't mean like you hear me talking. It's, it's, it's like internal dialogue where you'll get a sense of something you should do. or You'll get a sense of something God wants you to say or somewhere God wants you to go. Or you'll get a sense of something you need to read. Or you'll be reading your Bible and the spirit of God start dealing with you in a certain way. We got to embrace the relationship aspect of our salvation for where we're going and what he wants us to do and be. Amen. Y'all got some out of that? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. And to my online crew, we appreciate you for fellowshipping with us today. I pray that you were blessed by something you heard today. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service. And your success is in God's word. We love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.